Calendar heat maps are a great way to visualize time series data over an entire year. Individual days are shaded from light to dark according to the measure you put into the view. In this example, I've created a calendar heat map for the year of 2020. The days are shaded from light to dark according to the sales. If I change the year to 2022, I now see my sales by day for 2022. And this is what I'm gonna show you to build in this tip. Welcome, my name's Andy. I created this channel to help you become great at Tableau. Be sure to hit that subscribe button. I create lots of content every week and I don't want you to miss out on anything. If you find this video useful, please give it a like. Every time this video is liked, there's more chance that somebody else will find it too. And better yet, why don't you go ahead and share it with somebody that you think will find it useful. There's a link in the description to download this workbook, but watch the whole video first. You'll learn better that way. I'm using the Sample Superstore dataset. I'm gonna right click and drag order date to the rows and choose order date discrete. Notice that there's days missing. For example, January 1st and 2nd of 2019 are missing. January 22nd of 2019 is missing. That's because there were no sales for those days. But in order to build an entire calendar year, we need those days in the view. We accomplish that through a technique called scaffolding. Right click on the data source and choose edit data source. Add a new data source, choose more, and I created this data source that has every date from 2019 to 2030. Again, there's a link in the description to download this. Click on open. And if I look at this data set, you'll see that it has every day, including January 1st and 2nd, including January 22nd, all the way through 2030. Double click on orders to bring up the join view. Drag sheet one over to the right. In the join window, choose order date on the left, date on the right, and make sure you pick full outer join. This is a critical step. This ensures that all of the dates from 2019 through 2030 are brought into the data set. Close the join window and go back to our sheet. Right click and drag date on top of order date and pick date discrete. And now you'll see we have every date from 2019 through 2030. Drag that off of the view. Right click on the date field and choose create custom date. And let's call this one month. In the detail, choose months and then date part. Click on OK. And we're going to come back to this calculation in a minute. Right click and drag date to the columns and pick weekday. Hit OK. Right click and drag date to the rows and pick quarter. Hit OK. Drag date to the filters. Choose years, next, and pick any year. I'll say 2021. Hit OK. Right click and drag date to the rows and choose week and click on OK. And now you'll see we have a nice calendar from top to bottom but we want it to be in a three by four layout. And that's what we created this month field for. Right click on that new month field and choose create group. Choose January, April, July, and October, and click on the group button. And I'm gonna call that group one. Choose February, May, August, and November. Click on group and call that group two. Choose March through December. Click on group and call that group three. And then click on okay. Drag that month group field to the left of weekday on the columns. And now you'll see we have a three by four layout of our months, but it doesn't look like each week lines up. So for example, weeks one through five are here, but then a little bit farther down in the view are weeks six through nine. Ideally, weeks six through nine will be up here in this space. To do that, we need to create a calculation that offsets the weeks. In other words, weeks one through five should be here, but weeks seven through 10 should almost reset to weeks one through five. Let's create a new calculated field, and I'm gonna call this one week offset. Drag the week field from the rows into the calculation, and we're gonna subtract from that the first week of each month. And we're gonna do that with a level of detail expression. Start with a mustachio. Fixed on date part, month of date. So that's gonna say for each month, colon, we wanna get the minimum week. So type in min and then drag our week field from the rows into the calculation. And at the end of this line, put a right mustachio. Click on okay. Tableau puts this down as a measure, but we don't wanna aggregate this field. So I'm gonna drag it up to our dimensions, right click on it again and choose convert to continuous. Drag the week field off of the rows 
and drag week offset to the rows instead. Right click and drag date to the labels and choose day. Click on OK. And now you can see it looks like we have a calendar, but everything's upside down. Right click on the week offset axis and choose edit axis and choose the reverse option. And then close that window. Change your mark type to a Gantt bar, double click on the marks card and type in average of one and drag that average of one field to the size shelf. And now you see every day is filled up. Click on the label shelf, choose the allow overlap option, click on alignment, make it right horizontal and center vertical. And I'm gonna make the font a bit smaller as well. Maybe I'll make it seven. Drag sales onto the color. And now we have our full year calendar, but the weekdays are at the bottom. Most calendars I look at, the weekday is at the top. To fix that, go up to analysis on the menu, table layout, advanced. We want to uncheck this option that says show innermost level at bottom of view. Uncheck that option, click OK, and now our weekdays are at the top. We don't need these numbers one, two, and three. So on the month of group field on the columns, uncheck show header. We want the weekdays to be abbreviated. Right click on one of the weekdays and choose format. In the dates, choose abbreviation and close. We don't wanna see this date word at the top. So right click on that and choose hide field labels for columns. We don't need to see the quarters down the left. So right click on quarters in the rows and uncheck show header. So this is looking pretty good. I'm gonna right click on my year on the filter shelf and choose show filter. Change the filter to a single value dropdown. Go into the options for the filter, customize, and we're gonna untick the all option because we only want one year to be able to be picked at a time. So for example, if I change it to 2020, now I see a calendar for 2020. The next thing we need to do is get the month labels in the view. To do that, I'm gonna create another calculated field. I'm gonna call this one month labels. If my weekday is equal to five, which is Thursday for me, which is in the middle of my view, then minus one, end. If your weekdays start on Sunday, then you're gonna to wanna to make this four so that it's Wednesday, which will be in the middle of your view. Click on okay. Right click on that field, default properties, aggregation, and average. Drag that field to the rows. On the average month label marks card, change the mark type to text. We wanna take all of these fields off the view and then right click and drag date to the text shelf and choose month. Click on okay. And now you can see we have our month labels. Right click on the average of month label on the rows and choose dual axis. Right click on the month label axis and choose synchronize. And now our months are right above each of the days. Go to our week offset marks card, click on size and make them as big as they'll go. Click on color, go to border and maybe put a light border around each of the days. We don't need our headers for our rows, so I'm gonna right click on week offset and uncheck show header. Let's clean up the view a bit. Right click in the view and choose format. Go to your lines, turn your grid lines on and back off. Turn your zero lines off. Now, if you remember, January 1st didn't have any sales and you can see it's null here, but it still has a color. We actually want that to show up white. So I'm gonna do that with a calculation. I'm gonna create a new calculated field and I'm gonna call it adjusted sales. If null, sales. So if my sales is null, then I want to return a minus one. Click on OK. Let's drag that to the color shelf of our week offset. And then drag sales back to the detail shelf. Now we have these gray colors. Click on color, edit colors. For the bottom color, instead of brown, I'm going to choose white. Choose the full color range. And then in advanced, make sure you check the center to zero. Click on OK. And now the days with no sales are white, so it's more obvious which days we didn't have sales. I can change my year and I can see everything works. If I go to a future year, let's say 2029, everything is blank because obviously we don't have any sales for 2029 yet. If I go back to 2020, all we see in our tooltip now is sales but we want the date to be in there as well. Right click and drag date to the tooltip and notice it becomes an attribute. Right click on attribute of date and choose format. In the pane option, change the date to a standard long date. Now when you hover over any of the marks, we can see the date and the sales. 
Let's put this in a dashboard. I'm going to drag in sheet one. I could probably get rid of my color shelf. I'm going to edit my title. I'm going to call this daily sales. And then I'm going to insert my year. Click on OK. So daily sales 2020. If I change the date to 2022, it now says daily sales of 2022. From here, you can make it whatever size you like and you're all finished. I hope you found this tip useful. If you did, please give it a like and don't forget to click subscribe. I wanna make sure that you don't miss anything. Thank you for watching this week and I'll be back next week with another tip.